You know, it's not about money, you know. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ is the true meaning of Christmas, and Easter is the resurrection. It's when he died on the cross. It's what the, This is the reason for the season. You know, his birth doesn't forgive us. It's when he died on the cross. When he rose from the grave, that opened up the gates to heaven. All the Jewish believers that were the ones that knew the scriptures, they, they, they died before Yeshua came into the world, the believers. They were in a place called, uh, they went to be with their fathers, Abraham's bosom. It was a holding place. But then when Jesus rose, you know, he went down there. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10 tells us. To, he talked to them to, 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 to release the captivities from captivity. You know, when he rose from the grave, that opened up the gates to heaven. All those Jewish believers went up into heaven. And now everybody like you and me, when we take our last breath, we're either going into heaven or we're going to be burning in a horrible place called hell. Now, God gives you a free choice to determine your own destiny by what you do with Jesus Christ. This is what Easter is all about. He came into the world and he died on the cross. Why did he rise from the grave? I don't know anybody else that rose from the grave. Do you? Except the, the ones that there were healings in the, in the Bible. Do you know anybody that, that came back to life? No. Why? Why? Why did God do that? You want to know why? To show us there's life after death. He was in his new glorified body. He was showing him the, the holes in his hands and his feet and his side. Remember in John chapter 20, when he rose from the grave and he appeared in the upper room, Thomas wasn't there. Judas hung himself. The other ten apostles were up there, and he showed them his hands and his, his feet and his side. He said, look, it's me. Now, they told Thomas later, but Thomas, remember Doubting Thomas? That's why he's called Doubting Thomas. He didn't believe that Jesus rose from the grave. He said, unless I, I see him put the, his finger, unless I put my finger in the hole in his hand and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. I remember, eight days later, John 20, 26 says, he appeared again in the upper room. And Thomas was there this time. And, and Jesus, because he knows all things, he knew the day we were born, the day we we're going to die. He already knew Thomas said that. He wasn't even there. He said, Thomas, come here and put your, uh, put your finger here in my hand. Put, my, put your hand here in my side. Don't be, don't be unbelieving, but believe it. And you know what Thomas said? And it's a good one for the Jehovah Witnesses down there, by the way. John 20, 28. My Lord and my God. There's another one showing Jesus was fully God and fully man. Because the Jehovah Witnesses over here, they don't believe that. Like a lot of people. If you don't believe that, then you don't believe the Bible. And the problem with that is the Bible can be proven. It's God's mind to man. Do you know what Holy Bible stands for? He only left you basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what Holy Bible stands for. Did you know that? Now, maybe there's somebody here right now, and you're, you're really not sure what we're celebrating on Easter. Well, we've been talking about the true meaning of Easter. It's when Jesus died on the cross. Everybody's, everybody wears crosses. Madonna has a cross. Most people have no idea what that cross means. He died on the cross. You know what happened is, is the, the Romans ruled the world at that time. And when they crucified a criminal, they put the accusation above the cross what the criminal did wrong. If you were a drug dealer and you got caught dealing drugs, you'd be on the cross. And you know what it would say above your cross? This guy was a drug dealer. Now, if there's another drug dealer walking down the road, he looks up there and he sees that. It could take two to three days to slowly suffocate. Horrible way to die. He sees, he sees this guy on the cross. He was a drug dealer. He, he's going to think twice about dealing drugs, isn't he? Because he knows if he gets caught, he's going to be on that cross next. You know? They ought to crucify criminals in, the, in California. The jails will be half empty. Instead of letting people out before their time is up. But the, you know, the accusation above the cross of Jesus was, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. He, he, he took your place. You know, we're the ones that should be on the cross. We're the sinners. He was on that cross in Mark 15, 34. He said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabantani. It means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, at that moment, right before he took his last breath, God left him. He placed your sins and my sins, everybody's sins, upon the cross. 
here's the problem. People think, okay, he died for my sins. I automatically go to heaven. I can live any way I want to live. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't give us a license to sin if we're truly a born-again Christian. He said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 2 Corinthians 5.21, Paul said, He, God, made him Jesus who knew no sin. God can't sin. Every prophet admitted their sins. He was more than a prophet. He, God, made him Jesus who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So he didn't do anything wrong. He took your punishment. That's, that's, the banner says God loves you. Hey, you guys, if that ain't love, I don't know what is. Could you die for somebody else? Romans 5, 7, Paul said, For scarcely for a righteous person will one die, yet perhaps for a good person would one even dare to die. Then verse 8 of Romans chapter 5, But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In why we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. Would you like to know God right now? Would you like to know when you die, you'll go to heaven? Would you like to know that all your sins are forgiven? Past, present, and future. What we're going to do is we're going to pray the same prayer that I prayed 25 years ago. And I meant it. And I know I'm going to heaven when I die. It's not an easy life. It won't be an easy life for you. But it'll be the best decision you've ever made. Number one, you've got to realize you're a sinner. A sin is anything you do, the Bible tells you not to do. Have you ever stolen something that didn't belong to you? Could have been 20 years ago. That's a sin. You ever got drunk one time? That's a sin. You ever get high on drugs or pot? That's a sin. The Bible says that we could sin in our minds. Romans 3.23. The Bible says, We've all sinned and fall short of God's standards of perfection to make it to heaven after our physical body dies. you got to admit your sins to God. Some people say, I've never sinned against God. I help people out. I live a good life. Well, then you make God a liar. First John 1 John 1.10, John said, if anybody says they haven't sinned against God, they make God a liar, and his word is not in them. You may not think I'm a sinner. I'm probably a bigger sinner than most of you guys, but my sins are forgiven. Because 25 years ago, I prayed this prayer, and I put my faith in a living God, Jesus Christ, and I let go of religion. Let it go. It's man-made. You know, we love our mother and father. We love our, our family. You know, we're taught a religion. You know what Jesus said in Luke 12, 51 to 53? He said, do you suppose I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. From now on, five and one family will be divided. Three against two and two against three. I came to set a, set a father against a son, a son against a father, a mother against a daughter, a daughter against a mother, a mother-in-law against a daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. And the enemies of a person will be those of their own household. He who loves mother and father more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who doesn't take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. It's the only way to make it to heaven, you guys. The good news is we'll see our grandmother. We'll see our grandfather that's in heaven. But you can't rely on other people to get you there. He's going to judge you for you. He judges everybody individually. So would you like to know God right now? Would you like to know when you die you'll go to heaven? Would you like to know that all your sins are forgiven? past, present, and future. What we're going to do right now, we're going to pray the same prayer that I prayed 25 years ago when I invited Jesus Christ in my heart to forgive me of my sins. You guys can pray this anytime, anywhere. Remember, when you when you take your last breath, it's you and God. It's the only way that you're going you're gonna to get into heaven. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. you got to realize you're a sinner. Be sorry. And the reason most people will not put their faith in Jesus Christ, you must repent. St. Peter in the Catholic Bible said in Acts 3.19, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You know, repent means a change of direction. Instead of living the way you want to live, the way the TV wants you to live, the way the government wants you to live, you realize you're not living the way God and the Bible wants you to live. You come to the cross. Your sin is nailed at the cross. It's there. you got to receive him. you just got to receive what, what he did for you. He died on the cross for your sins, but you got to receive him. John 1, 12, Jesus said, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Everybody says, you know, we're all children of God. 
No, Romans 5.10, Paul the Apostle said, we're enemies of God. Oh, like the banner says, yes, God loves us. He loves you no matter what you've done. The problem is our sins make up us an enemy of God. It means God can't let you go to heaven with unforgiven sin. Only Jesus Christ can take away your sin. You guys, I can just tell you what happened to me 25 years ago. It was right from God. Although I wouldn't be here today. i got better things to do on my Saturday. But, you know, God loves you. We love you. The Bible says when you become a believer to get out there and share with other people. There's a lot of religions in the world. You know, religions are man-made. All roads lead to God, but there's only one narrow way into heaven. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you would like to invite him in your heart right now, because Easter's coming up in a couple of weeks. This is the reason for the season. You guys ready? Meet it from your heart, and God will honor this prayer. You can pray it now, out loud, by yourself. Uh, when you're home tonight, if you make it tonight, to your house, you know, three people die every second in the world. 100, 180 people a minute die in the world. We never think it's going to be us. We turn on the news, we're shocked what happened to our neighbor, what our neighbor did. And it's going to get worse, because we're in the end times. But would you like to have peace? Like Jesus said in John 16, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He did that by dying on the cross, shedding his blood, and rising three days later. So would you like to know God right now? Would you like to know that when you die you're going to go to heaven? Would you like to know that all your sins are forgiven past, present, and future? We're going to pray the same prayer that I prayed 25 years ago. It was in the spring of 1999, about 9 o'clock on a Monday night. Who goes to church on a Monday night? I meant it, and I know I'm going to heaven when I die. No, I haven't lived a perfect life. But if you pray this and mean it, all your sins are forgiven past, present, and future. You guys ready? Think about God. You're praying to God. You're not praying to me. I can't forgive your sins. A priest can't forgive your sins. A rabbi can't forgive your sins. A pastor can't forgive your sins. Only Jesus Christ can forgive your sins. When you open up the door of your heart and you invite him in. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them and they with me. So this is your opportunity to open up the door. Now or any time till you take your last breath, you got that opportunity. Remember, God's a spirit. These blue books were given out free. The Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 24. We got English, Spanish, French, Russian. These God's blue books were given out free. In John 4, 24, the Bible says, Jesus said, God is spirit. He's not a religion. God is spirit. He's the creator of the universe. He created you. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And Jesus said again in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, the door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And once he comes in, he's there for good. It's, you're sealed, guaranteed when you die, you're going to heaven. If you mean it. If you mean it, God honors it. If you don't mean it, he doesn't honor it. You guys ready? You guys ready? Think about God. You're praying to God right now. Whenever you pray this, think about God. He's knocking on the door of your heart. You just got to open it. Just pray. I've done bad things in my life, but I'm truly sorry for my sins. I thank you for loving me and caring for me. I thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood and rising three days later to pay for my sins. I ask you now, by faith, to come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior and forgive me of every sin, every wrongdoing I've ever committed. And I promise to follow you and the Bible the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. If you prayed that or you pray that one day, God says if you mean it, you're going to heaven. Your sins are forgiven. Doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. You know, when I sin as a Christian, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, it's talking to Christians only. You're a Christian now if you prayed that prayer. If we confess our sins, that's till the day we die. Because we're going to sin to the day we die. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.